So thank you everyone uh, for joining us this morning. Um, this webinar is about regression testing your Oracle quarterly updates. Um, we at Opti, we give webinars with each quarterly update, sort of breaking down the changes to expect. Um, but this webinar is going to be more specifically focused around regression testing. So uh, I believe it's the first regression testing webinar we've done. So uh, pretty excited about it. And let's get started. Um, so the presenter is going to be Dimpy. Um, I, I know most of you probably came to see me, but unfortunately, I'm just giving the intro and uh, making sure that we uh, are fielding questions. So uh, Dimpy, um, can you just introduce yourself and then let's get this started. Uh, sure. Hello, everybody. And uh, thank you so much for making the time for this webinar. I hope this is the best use of your time. And uh, I, I had the product solutions for Opki, and I'm very excited for the webinar. All right, so uh, housekeeping rules. Um, the audience lines would be muted, and uh, you can put in your questions in the Dropbox, and then we'll take it up after the webinar. The session is being recorded, so after the webinar, you'll get all the uh, links on your email. All right, so uh, agenda of this webinar, again, as um, we discussed, so it is going to be around regression testing and specifically around the quarterly patches and updates. So what I'm going to cover is, uh, we'll talk about the scope of the Oracle patch updates, the entire test validation. Then we'll talk about what it means for uh, the regression aspect uh, inside of the Oracle updates. We'll talk about the entire life cycle of regression uh, testing. We'll talk about what is the traditional approach that people are using in the market at this point and what is the recommended approach. We'll try to establish that. And then towards the end, uh, I'll talk about how Opki can help as part of the entire regression cycle for quarterly updates. And towards the end, definitely, we'll look at the, the platform. Uh, I'll show you some, some of the stuff in action. And then uh, we'll look forward, forward to your questions. So, um, as I said, let's discuss about the scope of regression testing in the quarterly updates. What do we really need to focus on during quarterly updates? Now, um, let's see in a very practical approach, you have hit the update. Uh, first, we analyze the impact. You need to know at that particular update, what has changed from the previous version? Where are we now? Then second, as part of quarterly updates, we need to know that what are the enhancement requests we are adding to our original test bed that was coming from the previous version. We do a quick round of sanity testing. Now, uh, this is the heavy part, right? We need to optimize the regression suites. So if there was a regression suite from the previous update, now it needs to be discovered based on the ERs and the regression beds need to be updated. Another part of regression suite, again, very, very important part is security rule validation. There are tons of changes that come in privileges for data security and function security, every patch update takes about significant amount of time. So we need to make sure that this is also incorporated. Last but not the least, all the integration tests, plus everything that we have optimized as part of the previous regression suites are also updated. I'll talk about all of these things in more detail. Now, key aspects of the entire life cycle of regression. Uh, Let's go back, I think, from the patch upgrades and just talk about the key aspects of any regression life cycle would be discover what you need to add to your previous test, previous test suite, optimize the test suite, execute it, and then manage it. These are the four key aspects. Now, um, but before I go more into the details of the, the, the regression life cycle and I talk about the approach before, and how do how is the market moving towards an autonomous approach? So I'm going to talk about that, but I think let's understand the um, the reality of uh, manual versus the traditional automation, and then obviously the approach, the recommended approach today. So if we talk about regression test bits and why it is taking the the amount of time that it is taking at this point, is because uh, there are two major things that that we are doing manually. One breaking down all the ERs and then converting them into test scenarios, documentation of the business processes, again, from a testing perspective and then uh, maintaining the test suites perspective, multiple data combinations, 
uh, that need to be tested. So we are only going into a loop of positive workflow testing and then the change impact. So we are trying to assess the impact of the change across every version manually. This was obviously the manual approach. This is a manual approach. If you look at traditional automation, um, there are a few things that are again different. Once you, and it's kind of similar to manual as well. Obviously the, the multiple test cycles is going to be different, but other than that, maintaining the test is going to be similar, at least for the optimization part, right? So if you look at the traditional approach, whatever ERs you have broken down, down here, you still have to convert them into automated test scripts in the new version. And that's obviously very, very expensive. You still are, if you're not using an autonomous approach, you're not assessing the change automatically. Again, updating the regression test suites from an automation perspective also becomes manual. So from an approach perspective, what do we do, do differently? Okay, I'll, I'll put a one-to-one -one from traditional and autonomous approach. So from a traditional approach, again, uh, you map the, the activities, activities again from the ERs perspective, anything additional, ERs or change. Uh, um, this uh, patch updates also give us the opportunity if we want to move to another environment, if you want to create a clone of another environment, if you want to add a configuration or a, a set of wave of your requirements that you want to add to this particular environment, all of those opportunities we get as part of the update testing. So not only ERs, you map all the activities that you want to do in this particular patch. Identify the business users, again, getting uh, that's in itself a constant struggle. Interview them, you need to sit with this uh, key users and business users and understand what those ERs mean in terms of the business processes and test scenarios. Document that if you want to create that into automated test scripts, specifically convert them into, <clears throat> I'm sorry, automated test scripts, and then the engineer test cases arrive. Whereas as part of autonomous testing, what we propose and recommend is you discover the scenarios, if it is based on a configuration change, or if it is based on any ERs that you uh, add or opt in as part of your new version, fine tune the test cases, a little bit of retrofitting happens if there's a change that needs to be done in some of the test cases, particularly the integration of the custom test cases. That's it. Your test scripts are ready for uh, execution. So that's the autonomous approach that we are recommending. Let's, let's look at some of the benefits. Very, very important. And I'll also talk about what it means for the business. So a continuous change cycle, whether it's a patch update or whether it is any kind of change. Some Now it's for EPM, it's monthly and for different other modules, it is going to be different test cycles. At any point, the continuous change analysis needs to be done. So you keep optimizing the regression bets. That's one of the major benefit. You can test more often if you have the opportunity of doing things autonomously and having the test beds autonomous with the autonomous updates, you do test more often. Otherwise, it's become a rigorous activity and nobody wants to just uh, go ahead into you know, such a big struggle without knowing that it is going to just cost them a click of a button or they have to spend like weeks and weeks of their user's time. Faster GTM, obviously. Um, now, from a rig, uh, risk perspective, if you are able to optimize these regression bets more and more, and you're able to extend your coverage more and more, obviously that kind of uh, binds to reduction of risk. Uh, what it also gives is, as part of recommendation, it should be there as part of the, the autonomous approach, is an automatic way of creating the documentation. How we help in, uh, in the aspect is where, uh, you know, Opki comes in and we have created things um, and offerings as part of patch update, very specific to what is going to be changed as in the test suites and how it can be achieved automatically. So first is the change impact assessment. It is a real time change impact anal analysis that gives you a view of what has changed between the new versions. It also gives you an uh, information of what are the new ERs that you have opt-in. And based on those new ERs, you just go into a, a process mining enabled test discovery platform, analyze what the ERs uh, or what are the scenarios now that are available based on the ERs. So you know what is the delta, add that delta into the previous existing 
test regression suites, convert them into a job or a new test suite, you're off, off for execution. Once the execution is done, you're able to generate the test documentation automatically again. Then you're able to link it with the integration platforms, um, test management and platforms and then you're you're able to just uh, manage the whole thing via either using the test management platform inside of opkey or integrating it with jira zephyr or any other platform outside let me show you how an update process looks like uh, from an opkey's perspective and and what we also try to do and try to give to our customers is um you know, for the regression testing or the risk-based testing and the entire patch testing is um, helping them achieve certification in two days. So that's what we strive. And we, we just want to utilize the other two weeks and kind of recommend and uh, encourage our, our customers more and more that they can utilize the other two weeks into um, maybe discussions with business users if they have more enhancements that they want to bring in um, validating it, connecting with the Oracle team for the SRs and, and things like that. So you, you look at the process here and it starts before the update. So pre-update, we kind of try to send out an advisory to our customers telling them that this is something that they are expecting to arrive uh, in this particular update. We take the baselines for security. We take the baseline for the entire regression bed just to give them an impact analysis on day one. Post-release, you get an impact analysis report. Again, test scripts that are affected based on the impact that Opkey assesses go into the regression bed. The security test scripts and all the changes go into the regression beds. Uh, and then all the issues that are getting tracked, those issues get tracked directly with Oracle based on the SRs that we re uh, release. You can also map those tickets directly to the regression test scripts. So you have an entire traceability matrix here. And then obviously the rest of the time is spent on if there are more test scripts that you need to add or modify, followed by the uh, end of that particular phase. What we deliver um, as part of the entire patch and the the end-to-end -end regression testing is we start with the update advisories, not part of the regression, but definitely uh, adds to what we want to. Uh, achieve towards the end, right? The entire li regression life cycle also, the aim is to achieve faster certification on patch, faster certification on any test cycle that you're running from Oracle, um, Oracle's version. Day one impact analysis report. So that's because of the change impact assessment, real time change impact assessment that you can do. And you can immediately get a view of what has changed and what are the test scripts that are affected. You have a certification within two to three business days. So you, you see within the same weekend that the patch has applied, the first weekend, you already have a certification on the entire test cycle. End-to-end -end regression testing, integration, smoke, sanity, everything, security. And the reason we are able to achieve is because we have opted for an autonomous approach um, extends to the entire regression. I'll, I'll cover that as part of our uh, demonstration as well. Autonomous test data preparation, again, very, very important, a major part of regression. Um, whenever we talk about an autonomous approach, we um, it's not ever limited to the test scenarios. It's always integrated with the, the data that you're preparing and how you're preparing the data and how comprehensive it is. The more comprehensive data and more, com more data is linked to how you have configured the system, it is going to give you an extended uh, data set that Op Opkey releases that goes directly into the test script. So the regression suites is, are, are extended to the optimized coverage uh, of the limit. Once you have the entire test coverage for this particular patch update uh, version, the regression suites are ready to be executed. Plus, uh, as I said earlier, the regression would be a mix of the impacted test scripts, it would be the end-to-end -end regression test suites, which have now additional ERs and the test scenarios related to ERs. You have the security test um, scripts, the reports data integrity, and this is when the regression test suite will complete. And all of this is kind of definitely supported by the test discovery platform. It's supported by um, the pre-built accelerator library that we have. I'm going to show you um, all of that in the demonstration. 
what does it mean again for uh, the businesses and the entire testing scope so think of it from a from a manual perspective right if you if you ever want to achieve the test and on an average you see the test uh, libraries are no less than 1500 to 2000 um, test scripts for any update and for for a simple finance to supply chain um, test implementation you multiply it with dif- different data combinations and on an average it is going to be like four to five and you immediately have like or if if you have like multiple locations it is implemented for multiple locations goes to somewhere around 5000 6000 tests uh, average every update do would we be able to achieve that in two weeks with like the um, the manual uh, help and the extension that we get no i mean it, it mostly falls into okay let's just trim it down into a regression bed which covers the priority test cases or just tr- trim it down or trim down all the test data or let's just merge uh, if certain locations are having similar configuration let's just test one and assume that everything else is going to pass so what we are essentially doing is just going with an assumption to a production environment obviously that's the reason we run into issues we run into hypercare and um, all of those stuff again on an average we are spending no less than 2 to 3 man months easily on these updates and this is what we are cutting down we are cutting everything down to two days we are cutting all the um, uh, effort that is required in testing absolutely zero and what we are uh, as i said acknowledging and and, and uh, encouraging the business users to kind of go to more and more into um, enhancing the er's enhancing the test scenarios discussing with oracle and just enriching more of the uh, business processes rather than doing the the recurrence uh, of tests you have an autonomous test documentation according to me that's also very very important when you have documentation for all the regression beds all the er's what are, what all er's that you have uh, opted for what are the scenarios that are linked to it what are the different uh, uh, test scenarios test scripts that you have added so you have an optimized test suite and you have test results for it in one go so you have in the entire matrix in front of you with this um i'll just say if you have any questions just put them down on the question box and we'll take them after the demo and i'll move to the real time platform now so um everyone I, i spoke about you know how you can add the er's directly which are going to add to your regression beds i spoke about um, how you assess the change and the impacted test scripts then get added to the regression beds so i'll start with how you incorporate and get the er's automatically what is that autonomous approach which i was talking about so here we are i'm on the process mining uh, platform um this is we call it test discovery Uh, and the reason we call it is because we uh, analyze our business here we analyze the entire oracle cloud platform here so i'm going to show you quickly for one particular process how we do it so we go into analysis of this instance what aapki really needs is just have it uh, pointed to one particular oracle instance we do it pointed to an oracle instance uh, with the bi admin access and that's all select the process and then give it the duration now for example if we have opted uh, for cer- certain ers in in a certain duration uh, we recommend we select that particular duration and have the system analyze it as soon as we analyze what we get um, are the test scenarios which are extended now which are extended based on the ers how we get it is because um, we opt in for the ers in the updated version Uh, in the updated oracle version based on certain fee, uh, flags opki starts suggesting you those scenarios that you should be adding to your regression beds so say your regression test suite was currently this much uh, these number of 37 test scenarios now if you have opted in for your ers for this particular update now for procure to pay you have another 106 test scenarios which are suggested these are more suggested from the um, 
the enhancements that you have opted in right so what opkit does is along with uh, this process that it has um, mined using the process mining enabled technology you also get the configuration so what we mine is the setups so if you see the right panel of my screen i'm showing the setups that we mine now as soon as you have mined the setups it also comes with certain flags those flags enable opki to kind of understand these are the test scenarios that you should be adding more and based on, based on these setups these are the test data combinations that you should be testing it with again everything added or adding to optimizing your regression beds the data is going to add the new test scenarios or the suggested test scenarios are going to add once we identify those test scenarios you just directly go into run list but before i go into a run list and selecting these test scenarios i would want to um, show um, the details of how the test data gets created and again that's an autonomous approach that it will just create the test data sets all the relevant test data sets convert them into test cases and how those uh, different test data look like it would look like something like this now this is updated version so even before the update we must have like one particular test suite that we are using for our test cycles but as soon as we hit the update we go and we run or the 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 mining on our platform again get the updated test scenarios now the data also gets updated you see these flags in here ap use allowed uh, uh, and pay and bank and different flags based on these flags these are new flags based on the opt in ers and now based on these flags you get these data sets i'm just showing you a back end view of how these data sets would go into every test scenario this particular row every test row is a relevant data set now going back to the platform you see a test case inside of a scenario that particular test case will be uh, linked to one data set here so this particular test case is now linked to one one data set and now if you execute it is going to exe uh, to going to be executed with one relevant data set in a similar way you have multiple uh, test based on how many ever data combinations the platform generates you have the opportunity to kind of select these test cases based on their their test data and you are able to execute them so um from here i can just schedule i can just create a test suite more optimized regression test suite and i can choose to add which data set i want to execute and that's it you can schedule and put it out for execution so i can just add to a run list here let me just go through the run list tab again here so we can just choose to add different test cases uh, i'll just show you more from the the separate tab again so you can select a scenario select different test cases now all the data sets are converted into different test cases so you choose different test cases add to a new regression uh, list here for the patch that's it you schedule it and then you have a new optimized test suite which has the new test script related to the ers which you can execute with an extended test data combination so you don't have to worry about the data you don't have to worry about anything that is kind of incorporated as part of the ers that's it now another very crucial and critical part of um, uh, adding the regression test suite is change so if there is a change that has come up in this particular patch how do you assess that and how do you make sure what are the test scripts that are affected because you you now have an extended library um, of tests based on your ers and you have an extended regression suite but what we also need to make sure is that we run an impact report for this particular update
right? So once we have this impact report, it is going to give us an analysis of um, what are the different transactions that are broken, what are the different test scripts that are um, affected because of this change like this. Here, so this is the process that is now changed. Now, uh, again, what it means for the test scripts or the test bed, you need to go into analysis. So these are the transactions that are modified or affected. Once we identify the change. So so example, super, super quickly here. Mm -hmm. um, the change here is the add open receivables. That is correct. Yeah. yeah so the change here, yeah. So the change here is add open receivables. And if you see the actual data and uh, under receipt details, right? So this pretty much looks like a transaction form on the Oracle application. So once we have identified what is the field that is changed, and in a similar way, right? There could be multiple scenarios. There could be um, disabled fields. There could be um, added fields. There could be mandatory, non-mandatory screens added. Multiple things. And based on this particular change, you now have um, um, a, a link to what are the test scripts that are affected. Why it's important for for the entire regression bed is because you need to know what are the uh, test scripts that are affected inside of your like thousands of test bed that you already have. So you have a more pointed suite already created, which is subset of your regression bed. So you can just select these cases, these test scripts, 17 test scripts are affected here. Select these test cases and again, um, schedule it out for execution. But before that, um, another question could be, right? So if I have seen uh, that these are the test scripts and these are the transactions that are affected, do I have to go to each and every test script and make that change? No. So you have an option which says heal and uh, you can select that what Opki is going to do is assess what that transactional change was and make sure that those changes are done in the linked libraries. Once those like this, so it identified the, the library that was affected. The library was create and approved non-catalog requisition. It identified the particular field that you added. And based on that, the keyword was applied there, which means that this particular library is now changed. It is now healed. Um, you already saw how the data came in. So you have these test scripts ready for execution as well. You create another run list, um, a job basically, which is a subset, as I said, subset of the regression life cycle and uh, create that as a risk cycle. And then put those 17 test scripts into the risk bed and those are also off for execution. All right, I think um, then another part of the entire regression testing would be, again, more very crucial part is security role validation. We see time and again, I mean, for 23A, we have seen, we saw it for 22D, multiple changes are coming in the privileges and uh, most of these uh, you know, tests are breaking. So I'll share you, show you one of the reports here that Opki fetches out directly as part of uh, one security test script execution. And it looks like this. So there are roles in column A and B, which get compared uh, based on their function and data security. Basically, Opki goes in and assesses, and for this particular role, is there any privilege which is affected? If yes, it is going to mark it in yes or no. Once you have that change, it gives you more details, detailed statistics. So I go into another tab. It will tell me for this particular role, and for data security, what are the different privileges that are added or modified, or is there any deletion, any kind of change? Then you go into more detailed comparison. Opki is going to do you do a more uh, detailed assessment and tell you that based on this particular rule, what was the pre-release data? What was the new release data? What Which exact privilege was removed? which exact privilege was added, any, any change. So you immediately have a view of what has changed in your particular role. And uh, if you want to kind of make sure that the users are not added to this particular role, or there has to be some modifications in your custom role that you need to, that you have made a clone of your standard role, all of that you can do. But this report will immediately give you that uh, assessment.
Yeah, and, and there are similar ways. There's a couple of other reports that we also generate that again go and add to the regression uh, cycle, the entire cycle. And then lastly, how do you generate the reports automatically? So there are a couple of reports that we generate just to give a view to the users what they have tested, right? So if I simplify that, what, what we want to make sure towards the end of that um, you know, patch update is what was the entire scope in this particular patch uh, in terms of uh, the different configurations, in terms of the different uh, um, scenarios, in terms of the different uh, you know, ERs, we want to first understand the scope. So the couple of screens Opti will tell you that what, is, what was the entire scope. And then when you tested, what was the test result uh, looking like? This is one of the more uh, detailed execution reports. So as soon as you execute, it will give you a view of how many uh, unique test scripts, how many business units that you were executing it from, what, were the, what was the failure analysis, what, was the, what were the number of test cases that were passed, and if they passed or failed, which category they belong to in terms of the business units. Right, so for every module, then you have like specific details and uh, the, the specific analysis. Now, if I show you one of the uh, playbooks, it will give you um, an understanding of the details of the scope as soon as you come out of, uh, right, so something like this. So it will give you an, a summary of, uh, as I said, you want to make sure that this was the scope of your testing and this is what you achieved towards the end. Here. So you, you understand from this screen that it will tell you that about 312 test scripts, new test scripts were suggested to you based on the new ERs that you have um, added. Obviously, you know, this is more and, and because this particular instance has a lot of operating units that are um, added here and, and configured here. But yeah, this is how you will get the, the information. Then you get the information of all the configurations, all the new setups, all the new flags, which are enabled because of these ERs. So you know that because of this, the new test scripts are added. Happy to answer if you have, uh, you all have any more questions on this. And obviously, you know, it can, it can go into, um, the next step where we can do a more detailed demo for you all. But uh, yeah, this is what we planned to, to show you as part of the platform. Yeah, so let's see if any questions come through. Um, So I guess one question that I'm seeing um, come through is about test data, um, basically mm -hmm. asking how we can ensure that test data is representative of the real world use cases. Well, all the test data is, uh, you know, representative of uh, the real world use cases, you know, the way we do it uh, is we, kind of generate the test. It's not gibberish at all. And we don't use any random data. What we, and how we create the test data is more from the setups that are available in the Oracle cloud system. So we fetch the configurations that you already saw on the, uh, on the platform. We fetch out the configurations and based on that, there is an algorithm that runs behind the scenes that gets you the test data combinations. Those are absolute relevant data combinations for that particular process. So if it is procured to pay, it is going to be test data created based on the um, uh, the payables and the procurement. It is if it is another any other module or any other process, the test data is going to be created based on that. So it is very very relevant and very specific to the configurations. Got it. Um, another question that just came in: um, Can customers use or make use of security roles validation um, outside of the quarterly updates? Absolutely, absolutely. Very, very relevant question. Um, uh, this, the entire offering, right? The, the entire offering for uh, discovering the process or discovering the instance 
uh, or change impact analysis or security validation is really exclusive of the patch updates. So obviously it makes more sense when it comes to patch updates, but other than that also, whenever there's a change, whenever there's something that you need to, um, your implementation specialists have made the change and you wanna analyze that what is the effect of that on the system, you just run that. The security, for example, security, right? So before the, making the change, just take a baseline. And after the change, um, just take another snapshot, compare the two, and you'd be able to get a report out of it. Same for the impact assessment and uh, same for discovery. Great. Um, last question, let's keep this under 40 minutes. Um, what is required from Opki um, to get the configuration impact analysis and the self-healing capabilities? Well, um, you know, absolutely nothing, you know, from, uh, from us, we don't take much input from, from the customers. Uh, how we implement is more autonomous. So we just request the customers for the access and the BI admin access, the Oracle cloud URL and the BI admin access, that's all we need. And towards the end, right, for example, 70, 80% of the test bed is automated. And if you have like very specific integration use cases that you want us to kind of incorporate into the system, because it's more standard and more, ex not, not only standard, but more comprehensive to your industry and uh, more under the boundary system of Oracle. So we, we get that and we get that created as part of our uh, test builder and recorder playback engine. So we use that and we incorporate those automation scripts as well. But for Oracle, we don't need anything other than the URL and the, the BI access. Perfect. Um, so we actually just got a, a new flood of questions come through. Um, mm -hmm. So let's go through this. Um, one, uh, someone asked if Opkey can be a testing as a service. Uh, answer to that is yes. Um, and I'd be happy to send some info on that. Um, another question that Dimpy, I think I need your help with. Mm -hmm. um, can we execute, well, one of the questions, can we execute the same scripts to other clients with uh, changes of URL and user ID and password? Yes, I mean, absolutely. I mean, you can change the URL and the user ID and password and you'd be able to mine any other platform as well. We just recommend it to be different domains for different customers, but uh, yes, absolutely, yes. Um, another question, can we develop our own test cases on the application using Opkey? Um, I guess I can answer that one, uh, absolutely. Um, we have a uh, no-code test builder um, where you can record actions. You can also uh, drag and drop specific components. So uh, while these pre-built tests are, uh, you know, a pretty big component of what we do, um, pretty much all the time, uh, our customers are creating tests as well. Um, yeah. And just to add to that, uh, this is where we started from as a test automation platform. So you can expect all the different technologies, web, desktop, mobile, uh, different other ERP applications, API database, all of that. And in more extensive and more, uh, you know, expanded technology. So all of that you can expect from the platform. Yeah, couple more. Um, is there a graphical representation of test execution results? I, ninety nine percent sure. There is. Yeah, 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 for sure. So we have dashboards um, and different other formats of reporting as, as well, and. Uh, yeah, absolutely. You can you can have a look at that in, in more detail. And then last question. Um, sorry, two more questions. Uh, one, how far can the self-healing go? Um, this is a little bit of a uh, abstract. Very good question. But, Very yeah. good question. Yeah, no, uh, I'll take that. I think um, I do get the intent uh, from the attendee. Um, you, you saw the functional healing of the change, right? And, and I understand the questions coming from that, where it assessed uh, assessed that this transaction is broken and this is something that has been uh, added or modified or whatever changes have happened. And that change has gone into the test script. There is another aspect of self-healing as well, which is a technical self-healing, which means that as soon as the change has happened, say Oracle Cloud 23B, 
um, the 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 entire dorm structure changed at the back end so will opki identify that and heal that yes opki provides an updated plugin to you um, for every update which is 23a 23b you just have to uh, upload that particular new plugin and as soon as you execute the tests now any change from a technical perspective also is handled this is more from the back end but you don't have to do anything if there's any property that is changed or the entire structure that is changed you don't have to worry about your test script being broken awesome um is opkey pixel based or object based object and more keyword driven so we don't use any kind of uh, these these are captured these properties are captured but we don't uh, kind of use that those are not priority properties when it comes to scripting um, we use by text keywords that that's our patent as well which runs on label text and label so if there's a label on the screen which says uh, po type you we are going to work on that label rather than the property behind it and uh, and obviously yes all the properties are captured and it um, there's a technology that we use which is intellisense that is going to prioritize at every update or every change or every refresh so every time you open oracle cloud application there are multiple properties that gets captured text is the one that we prioritize and if it doesn't work in microsecond you won't be able to make out on the screen but in microseconds it will switch to any other a pro a pr property if the first one is not working awesome um it right, looks like we have a couple more um can opki pass input values in excel um, yes absolutely absolutely you can use anything for data man management uh, obviously this particular session was more towards uh, regression cycle but i think uh, isaac we do get a hint right people do want to know like a generic approach of opki's platform and we we might do another webinar for for that as well but just to answer your question yes absolutely you can take the input from the excel you can directly input in opki's uh, uh, test data worksheet as well that's also uh, that that is an excel worksheet on the ui um and yeah you you can you can use that very easily it's a very simple format and uh, if you guys can come over on a real time demo we can definitely show you in more detail awesome um can opki take screenshots when a test is being recorded 100% at every step you have the snapshots and um, for failed snapshots that you want to choose for only all the snapshots only passed one and uh, the results are very very detailed Okay. Um, let's see. Looks like there are a couple more. Uh, if there are any errors, um, can Opti take screenshot and highlight those errors? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. At every step, past, failed, all you you get a snapshots. In for failures, we I mean provide more details. Why exactly it failed? Which step? Uh, what was the error message? We capture all of that. Uh, and the users can immediately see why this change would have happened. Awesome. So, last couple of que gosh, the questions just keep flowing in. Uh, uh, can we integrate Opti with Jira to track? Uh, absolutely. Um, most of our customers, or I should say, a large percentage of our customers do that. Um, another question Can Oracle implementation partners use this tool for? Um, basically on behalf of their clients during implementation and support phases. Absolutely. Um, we do have a, uh, a robust partner program um, that I'd be happy to sort of put you in touch with the right people there. Um, is there any way to disable screenshots for sensitive information like social? Yes, yes 100%. So if there is a PII data, and you're looking for that particular answer um, or um, some kind of information which is like more uh, sensitive, yes, you have the, the opportunity to just disable the snapshots. You can run it in headless mode. All of that uh, options are available just to make sure that the, the customers are comfortable. Awesome. So I think 
that is it. Um, Dimpy, thank you uh, for presenting. And everyone else, uh, as we said at the beginning, you guys will get a recording of this. Um, and you can just respond to that email. Um, you can email info at opki.com or just reach out through our website. Um, we hope you folks learn something. Um, and thank you for the time. Thank you so much, everyone, for the time. It was amazing. Thank you.